Hi there, and let's get started. So far, we've been doing all of our window tracking using the Cloud Tracker mode. And that's because the Cloud Tracker will take care of most of your tracking needs. But the other option we have, the Point Tracker, refers to older methods of tracking in which the compositor has to identify to the software what they want tracked, so a specific object or tracking point. Just like with any manual tracking, we have to make sure that our trackers are high contrast, in focus, ideally, and also visible throughout the shot. Resolve's got a pretty powerful tracking engine, so I've seen it handle some pretty dodgy trackers, but still, for the cleanest possible output, you want to follow those rules. The way that the tool works is pretty similar to how the cloud tracker worked. First of all, we want to move our playhead either to the very beginning or end of the clip so that we only have to analyze in one direction. But this is not a must. You can always just start from the middle and then track backwards and forwards until you get the desired track. I'm going to start from the beginning and I first have to create a power window as you do with all the other trackers and place it on something that you want to track. And in my case I'm going to use the label on the rider's helmet. I don't have to make the window too precise because remember we can always resize these after the track. But once the window is in place I'm going to go back to my tracker palette make sure that I'm in point tracker and not cloud. And then we have to add our first tracker. So in the bottom left hand corner, we have our add and subtract tools. And I'm going to click on add, which will automatically drop a tracker in the center of my image. I'm going to use my mouse to pick this tracker up and drop it at an appropriate tracking point. I'm going to place it here in the center of his label because I think it's sufficiently in focus, visible throughout the shot, and the white on blue contrast is also quite nice for the software to identify what it should be following. Oh, by the way, you can always add additional trackers if you want to. So if I thought that maybe this one track wouldn't be precise enough, I could then click on the Add Track button again, and once again I'm going to see this blue crosshair in the middle of my screen, and then I can relocate this and place it where it needs to be. Make sure, however, that if you're following a specific object, that you're dropping your trackers on the same plane. Uh, it wouldn't make any sense for me to drop this tracker on this, you know, arguably very good tracking point, very visible and bright in the background, because these are two different planes, and if I was trying to affect something on him, then the parallax wouldn't make sense, and we would not get a good track out of this. So make sure that everything that we're tracking is more or less in the same area physically. I'm then going to reset my screen to fit so that I can keep an eye on this as it analyzes forward. And now I'm ready to click on the track forward button. When I do this I have to keep an eye on the screen to make sure that the track is being correctly carried out. And yeah, it seems that both the top and bottom trackers are doing their job. Uh, so I'm going to zoom in, do a last check that yes, it's still on the white label on his helmet and that's still staying on that dark grill area. And now I'm able to zoom in and make the modifications that I want. So I guess the most obvious application for this particular shot is to change the color of his helmet. But I was actually thinking along the lines of some light compositing. So very frequently I might have a client ask me to remove the labels of things, you know, for copyright purposes. So what I can do is I can use this node to grab a portion of his helmet without a label on it and use it as a cover-up for the label. I've made the window as small as possible so that it just covers that area. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to pick up this window and instead of being over the label, I'll just use the blue section right above the label. Then I'm going to go into my sizing palette, make sure I'm only affecting the node because I don't want to be moving the entire image around, just this one instance of it. I can now use the tilt tool to bring it down. I can go back into the window and maybe adjust it a little bit to make it the right size. I could even convert it to a bezier shape so that it fits that label perfectly. And of course I want to blur this quite a bit. And up close maybe it doesn't look fantastic, but I promise you that once we zoom out and we look at the final product, this is going to be quite unnoticeable. I wish you good luck in your compositing endeavors and I'll see you next time.